Hey there, Falcon fans. This is Stickster. Uh, I had a couple comments and questions uh, asking me about walking through just making a patch. Um, I'm going to make something simple here, just an evolving ambient pad. I want to get something that is full uh, and bright and sit in a music bed well under some other synthesizers. So I'm going to drag you through this, basically uh, just trying to talk you through what I do. My way of working may not work for everybody, and if not, that's fine. If you have some tips that you like to share, feel free to do so in the comments, and hopefully this will show you something that you can apply, and if there's something special that you like in it, or if you are uh, looking to have me explore some bit of tech that you see me do, but maybe I haven't explained well, also let me know about that. Happy to do uh, more explanations in the future. All right, with that, let's get started. I don't know how long, how long this is going to take. Uh, we're not on a clock, so let's see what happens. I'm going to open up my mapper. I'm going to bring a wavetable in here, uh, and I'm going to drag it up to the top so that it takes up the whole, uh, the whole key group from end to end. And let's choose a wavetable. I have some custom wavetables that I uh, added here just for making this video. And let's, I like this CDS9. I'm going to grab this one and let's see how that sounds. All right, I like it. It's kind of toothy. It's got some character to it. And uh, don't worry, we're going to uh, also, um, very quickly here, we're going to do some things that'll uh, make it easier to listen to. Um, for example, I'm going to swap out the Ampli uh, the um, the amplitude envelope, and I'm going to uh, let's rename this so it's easier to find. I'm going to raise the amplitude uh, attack up to I don't know four or five seconds, probably the same for the release, so it's nice and uh, juicy and sort of hangs in there for a while. And I'm going to add some delay, uh, maybe not quite so long, and then I'm going to adjust the curves very slightly. There we go. So now, okay, super. We've got this nice attack and release. Still not very pleasant to listen to. So the first thing I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to add a filter of some sort. For right now, um, I'm going to make this um, pretty simple. Uh, let's add, I'm just going to add the um, the SVF for right now, the SVF filter, and turn the cutoff down just a bit, maybe resonance up slightly. Notice I'm playing with the knobs a bit, and I tend to do that so I can hear what it's going to be like when I uh, when I start modulating it, which of course is something I'm going to do. So I'm going to set this cutoff to something I like, and I'm going to put in an LFO here to help modulate, and I'm going to make it um, something that is a little bit chaotic. So I'm going to use this Lorenz uh, chaotic, and I'm going to turn the depth down just a bit. And I'll put the frequency up a bit for right now so that I can tell uh, more easily what's happening. And I'm going to have this modulate the cutoff, so I'll call it cutoff. And I will move this onto the cutoff. And I'm also going to um, I'm going to add something to help us modulate the wavetable itself. Um, again, I also want that to kind of wander around a bit. So I'm probably going to put in a drunk oscillator for this. And let's call this wavetable position, wavetable WT pause. Again, I'm going to turn the bandwidth up a good bit and the smooth down slightly and drag this onto the wave index. Now when I hold down a key, you can kind of see what's going to happen. This is way too much energy for a pad, obviously. So I'm going to turn down the modulation depth a bit. Something else I'm going to do to make this a little thicker, we're going to add some voices, 
put some stereo in here. I'm going to spread the waves just slightly. Now, the wave spread here is the position in the wave table. So each voice will have a very slightly different uh, wave to it. So that could be nice too. And I'm going to add some stereo spread. Something else I'm going to do, uh, and I'm going to turn to the detune a bit. Um, I tend to like uh, stereo spread of uniform. It kind of puts the voices at their own uh, place in the stereo uh, field. If you do hard, basically what it means is uh, you may have a, you'll have a voice in the middle if it's if it's an odd number, and the other voices will be on the far left and right. I like uniform because it kind of spaces them out, and then the stereo spread says how far to the left and right the the most left and right voices will be. Uh, I'm going to turn this up to five actually. Let's see how that is. Yeah, that's pretty nice. And something else I'm going to do, we're going to put another LFO in here. I am not shy about adding LFOs. Uh, we're going to put a sample and hold here. Um, I'm going to turn the frequency down a bit. Um, I am going to turn the smoothing up a lot because this is going to act basically as a sort of the smooth. What that'll do is turn this from being a sharp up and down into more like curves. And I'm going to call this LFO. Uh, we're going to modulate the phase distortion with this. And I'm going to drag that on the phase distortion. We're going to turn that down a bit. I'm going to turn the phase distortion up just a bit to start with. And I'm going to make this unipolar and see how that is. Also need some resonance uh, adjustment here, so I'm going to do an LFO for that. I'm also going to make that unipolar, um, and uh, again, I'm going to do something that is. Um, I think I'm going to use uh, the sample and hold again. Um, let's keep the frequency about there. I'm going to turn the depth down. If I can type correctly, turn the smoothing up quite a bit, and. Let's call this resonance res for resonance. I'm going to pull that on to our resonance here and again drop the depth of the change way back. dig that it's okay uh it you know doesn't sound like a lot right now let's add some we're going to add a noise oscillator uh, i'm going to use some white noise i'm going to disconnect the oscillator so that i can turn the gain on this one down quite a bit matter of fact i'm going to take this wavetable i'm also going to turn the gain down here because pretty soon we're going to be using some chords and this is going to get a lot louder when we do that maybe even minus 7 db take the noise down a bit more okay Let's see what this is like with uh, uh, kind of a nice chord in here. One other 
thing that uh, that is a, a cool thing to do here, I think, is to get a little bit of um, get a little bit of movement in the stereo in the stereo image. And so, what I'm going to do is I'm going to make another LFO here. We'll call it uh, stereo, and I'm going to drag this onto the stereo spread. Turn the modulation down a bit. I don't ever want it to get like fully. Um, fully in the middle. So I might turn the stereo, the, the starting amount for the stereo down, take the bipolar off, and I'm going to turn off re-triggering here because uh, I don't think it's going to serve us very well. I don't need it to change so often. So I'm going to turn this down and turn the bandwidth up just a smidge. And let's see how that, let's see how that goes. Kind of dig it. Okay. And uh, one other thing that I think I'm going to do because I'm, I'm, this is not a bad sound, but it's not enough on its own. Uh, I am going to, um, on this layer, I'm going to add a little bit of EQ. Um, let's throw uh, the default EQ here. And, uh, actually, I don't even need an EQ for this, but uh, I could just do this with a filter, but I might want to use this later to, um, uh, change a little bit of the character. So uh, EQ to me is a good way to solve this. I'm going to carve off some of the lows here with a 24 dB high pass. And let's go a little higher than that, I think. Let's see. Okay, maybe a little too much. Let's bring this back a bit. Okay, that's pretty cool. Uh, the other thing I'm going to do is we're going to add some modulation in here. Uh, we're going to put the 505 Ensemble. It's just beautiful. And I'm going to take the mix down a bit. And this is something else where... All right, it adds quite a bit. I'm going to pull that Ensemble actually before the EQ so that we're just we're trimming it off post. There we go, post-modulation. Something else I like to do is... Um, you know, we can modulate this mix a bit. So I'm going to put a put an LFO on here. Uh, we'll just make this simple. It'll be a triangle, and I don't don't need this to be re-triggered. And I'm going to make this unipolar as well, and I'll take the depth down a bit. Let's call this like 50 percent again. Just gives gives makes it a little bit easier to control. We'll call this uh, 505 mix. And we're going to pull this on to, oh, look, apparently, I guess I can't modulate that at the layer level. Of course not, because, why? Well, because I'm using a uh, key group modulator. That's not going to work. And, uh, yeah, I do this. I do this, folks. This is, uh, this is a thing I do. So let's add a new modulation source at the layer level. Um, triangle, unipolar, and, again, depth 50%. We'll call this... 505 mix and now we should have a little bit easier time using that and i can see what it's doing now is like obviously it is way 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 too much and yeah that is super extra we don't want that all that so let's try that how it's breathing in and out now. Now, there's no science to this. I'm not following a formula or anything. I'm just trying some things. The great thing about Falcon is because you're not limited in modulators or anything like that. It is basically an unlimited palette. 
you don't have to figure it all out from the beginning. Okay, so with that in mind, I've got this layer. I'm, I, I kind of like it. I like where it's headed. Um, I'm going to go over to the tree view, and you'll see this layer is here. I'm going to call this, I'm going to go over to this layer and make it easier to find. I'm going to call this wavetable, and I'm going to add another layer. So to the program, we'll add a layer, and I'm going to do something that'll fill up sort of the bottom of this patch, give it some weight. And a nice way to do that, because it's a, you know, a more harmonic, rich waveform and sort of fills up space, uh, I'm going to use some saws. Probably not that, uh, not that big a surprise. So I'm going to, under mapping, uh, I'm just going to grab an analog, I'll pull it down in here. Actually, for fun, let's do a wavetable, because I've shown this in a video before too. I'll link that video here in case you're interested on these alternate analog oscillators. So I'm going to pull that wavetable in, and uh, let's look for these alternate analog um, uh, sawtooth waves. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab this dinosaw. So I want it to be pretty, pretty, uh, uh, pretty conventional, but not entirely. I'm going to, again, I'm going to add some voices. There is no such thing as wave spread. I'll put a little bit of stereo spread here. Um, and I'm going to detune these a good bit, I think. Uh, one more time, I'm going to make that uniform. That's just what I like to do. Uh, you know, do whatever floats your boat, obviously. And uh, because I've got, uh, I, I really want this to kind of match the, uh, I want this to match the envelope that I'm using elsewhere. I'm going to actually take this amp envelope and I'm going to make this a DH, DH, DSR. I'm going to go back over here to the wavetable. And on its envelope, I'm going to do, this is something I like to do is just drop over here, copy to clipboard, now go back to the saws, to the DAHDSR here, and then paste. And that way I get the same uh, envelope for both of these. Okay, well, that's that's great. It, you know, it's not sounding very good right now, obviously, because the saws are really huge. Uh, so let's put in a filter as well here. Uh, let's put like a dual uh, VCF 20. What it, this is such a, oh my gosh, this is such a great, it's such a great sounding filter. I like to put a high pass cutoff on here and raise the peak just a bit. And it kind of gives it a little bit of, gives a little bit of booty. Um, again, your mileage may vary. Uh, it's up to you how you like to do this. Once again, I'm going to, um, I'm going to have an LFO here that will vary the, the, um, the cutoff. Um, I'm going to have this one be a little more conventional uh, triangle. It'll be slow. And I'm going to turn the depth down. We'll call this cutoff. Oops, I can't I can't type or spell, apparently. Let's make that cutoff. We'll drag it up here. And, of course, turn the, uh, turn the width of the modulation down quite a bit. I'm going to mute the wavetable so we can hear what's happening here a little easier. like that. Okay. Yeah. No one ever went wrong with a little bit of a uh, little bit of saws there. Never hurt anyone. And let's do, um, actually, yeah, let's do a, uh, we're going to do a, we'll use an LFO here. We'll use uh, another one of the Lorenz. We're going to turn the depth down quite a bit and we'll call this res. We're going to apply it to the resonate, the resonator here. And Turn, again, turn the depth down quite a bit. And let's see what we've got now. And actually, we'll make this a... We're going to make this no retrigger. Take that. Make it a little slow. Okay, cool. Also, this key group... Uh, I just realized these oscillators are really loud, so I apologize. Let me take that down a bit. Now notice how we have a lot of body there. Now when I add that wavetable back in... So 
that's not bad. I think I'm going to go back to the wavetables here, and um, I'm going to edit the modulation on that stereo spread. I'm actually going to turn, uh, sorry, I'm going to turn the default up just a bit, and then I'm going to edit the modulation. I think this is unipolar. Yeah. And I'm going to actually allow this to get, I'm going to get, allow it to get kind of a little more wild. And let's see what happens. Maybe not changing as fast. They're a little, it's a little too regular for me and maybe just a little too wide. Like they're, they sound good, but I feel like that, that coming and going is, it's just a, it's a little bit too much for me. Like, I don't know that I want all of that happening so often. So I might turn the default up just a bit and see what's happening with the res here. Yeah, that, that feels, I'm going to take that down just a smidge too. so like so regularly so let's you know just click i clicked off it but whatever um i'm actually gonna go here and let's use this this rossler and i'm gonna change the phase on it just a little bit so it's operating a little bit differently and i'm gonna take the frequency down a little bit more and smoothing up so it hopefully won't change like radically too fast <laughs> That's not bad. Um, probably a couple other things that I could do here. Uh, let's. I think what I'm going to do is. Oh, let's add a little. Uh, there's something I forgot. I usually like to have a little noise in each layer. Um, again, just uh, it just kind of fills up the fills up the spectrum a little bit. Makes it a little. smooths things out yeah like that okay so i'll i'll leave that in and i think in this case what i'd also like to do is i would probably like to now let's let's listen to it again and see what's happening For one thing, it's it's kind of it swells a lot, and I I'm not sure I I'm not sure I love the I, the fact that it is um, you know kind of moving that um, you know that hard from from soft to loud, like it's doing that quite a bit. And so what I might want to do here is at the program level, um, or at one at whatever layer that I think is swelling too much, um, I might want to apply a compressor. Let's see what happens. How's this going? Yeah, that's that. This layer is kind of coming in and out really hard. So I think what might help us here is um, to add a bit of compression. Now we also might. It might not be so bad to put a little bit of crunch in here too. Uh, we're gonna drive this just a little bit harder, and then take the gain down, right? Cool. And I, you'll see, I use like to flick these on and off just to see like how radically did the volume change when I did this. Not very much at all. So.
cool. Okay, so I dig that, and then I'm going to add in a um, compressor here, just the, the simple compressor, and I think a ratio of about four is probably fine, and I'm going to lower the release just a bit, maybe to 65, and let's turn the threshold down. Let's see where we come in here. It's not bouncing quite as much, which I like. And I'm going to also turn the mix down a bit on this crunch. It's a little maybe too crunchy. Yeah, I like that better. Yeah, what worked on one might not work on another. So I might want to put, for example, a... Uh, you know, I might want to throw a compressor on here as well into the wavetable uh, layer. Yeah, let's do the same thing. I'll pop this over here. Take this down a little bit. Let's call this four. And actually, I might even do this one a little harder because it's moving quite a bit more. And let's see how this works out. So, uh, solo this layer. It's okay if it moves a little. I'm not looking for it to just be flat the whole time. How about a chord change? Yes. Yeah. And uh, again, you know, compression is the stuff of life. So I'm going to add a little bit of, I'm going to put one of these opal, um, or sorry, the feedback compressor up here at the uh, at the top. So, yeah, that's nice. Uh, what am I not liking about that? The attack is like a little too fast. saws they still feel too distorted to me so um i'm gonna go back here to the crunch and maybe i just kind of overdid it a bit do is uh, lower the compression and then take the threshold down. It's a little more smooth that way. There we go. And I think the same for the top level compressor. Okay, I'm going to move this down to about two to one. Oops, sorry, can't type. Two to one and then lower the threshold slightly. So I've got to bring this makeup gain up a little bit and might bring back some of the dry.
cool. And maybe one of the things I'm also not liking is the saws sometimes bite um, really fast uh, when I start. I think I'm going to turn the the uh, the um, the cutoff filter on those uh, back to retriggering for that reason. Let's see how that looks for the wavetable as well. Uh, what is my cutoff doing there? So, yeah, this is re-triggering, which I think is good. Uh, maybe we'll turn the frequency down just a smidge. Okay, that's not bad. So this doesn't sound too bad. Um, however... Uh, there's a whole other set of things we haven't done yet. Like, uh, for example, um, let's put in some some nice delay reverb. Now I've got an effects rack that I like to use. Um, I have this feedback machine uh, that I built for um, for shimmer reverb. And let's see if I take the I'm going to take this down a bit so we can kind of add it in and see what happens. Cool. And if you'd like information about this, uh, this shimmer reverb, this feedback machine, I've got a video about it. I'll link it up here so that you can get access to it. Um, check it out. The feedback machine is a great uh, function. And I think also on top of this, and why not? Because there's nothing better than a spark verb. I'm going to throw this on top too. And let's just start with uh, something easy like very long only i'm not sure i want it that long how about a very long but it's not going to be quite as long take the mix down a bit and i'm going to roll it off before 10k Yeah, that's pretty nice. Um, I'm going to take this crossover down, I think, a bit and put the decay up on the highs so I can grab a little more of them, I think. And there we go. Maybe shape this room just a bit. And... All right, that compressor is still, we need to make up some more. All right, since it is, clearly I'm not having an easy time getting that, that, um, that gain back where I want it. I'm actually just going to throw a gain in here and we'll add about uh, 3 dB, I think, back. So that's a nice evolving pad. Again, I'm just going to play one note so you can hear what's happening with just one note. Just uh, this is what an A flat two or something. And I might raise that feedback just a smidge.
There we go. So there we go. Now that is a hopefully a nice little uh, evolving ambient pad that we did from scratch. And I'm not sure if you would have picked up um, any new lessons in this, but uh, hopefully you got a, a, a look into, you know, how I might make an evolving pad like this. If I were going to design a different sound, my approach might be completely different. Um, sometimes I approach these with something in mind. Sometimes it's a blank canvas and I will just start throwing things together to see what happens. The great thing about Falcon is you, you know, there's really no such thing as mistake. There's more like you get happy accidents or you learn something, right? So never be afraid to try something, even if it seems goofy, right? You might learn something as a result. I don't think the things that I did here are quite so goofy. They're pretty standard, but um, hopefully this helped you out and will make you feel creative when you sit down uh, at your uh, system to make a sound in the future. So I hope until the next video, uh, you have a lot of fun with Falcon and I'll see you next time.